game day folks here in Utah. We're at the Energy Solutions Arena just inside the concourse, the team going through shoot around behind us. Uh, you know, a tough place to win. As a matter of fact, Eric, the Raptors have only won seven games in club history against Utah and are on a 10 game losing streak to the Jazz right now. So it's gonna be very tough get tonight. Well, it seems like we were talking about uh, similar statistics the other night in Sacramento uh, with the lack of success in Sacramento, specifically against the Kings, and the Raptors look to have that one in hand and, of course, blew the 17-point lead. And uh, that's something that certainly can't happen tonight. If you're lucky enough to actually hold a big lead in this building, you got to find a way to hold on to it. And that seems to be one of the themes of talking to the players over the last couple of days. Jose Calderon yesterday, DeMar DeRozan, and Jay Trano this morning just talking about how difficult it can be to play in this building, one of the toughest in the league, because the fans are right on top of you. DeRozan said, hey, it reminds me of some of the places I played in college, a college building. The fans are right close to the court, and they are so loud here, and, and that sixth man truly rings true here in Salt Lake City. Well, you know, and then they, they've got a coach who's been around, uh, you know, longer than anybody else, and I mean that literally in terms of pro sports, the longest tenured coach in pro sports, Jerry Sloan, only five wins away from passing Pat Riley to be third on the all-times win, wins list. He, he doesn't change stuff. You know what? You're going to see the same offense you've seen for the last 20 years. It's just a matter of trying to neutralize it because you know what's coming, but can you stop it? Al Jefferson doing a terrific job, as is Paul Millsap right now, in kind of filling in into the role of Carlos Boozer. They go inside with Jefferson. They still run the screen roll stuff with Millsap and Darren Williams. You know, Millsap became only the third player ever in Jazz history to have a game with 30 points, at least 15 rebounds, and at least five assists when he had 30, 16, and six in a huge win, huge win over Oklahoma City in their last game. You know, there's gonna be something to be said as well for playing teams early in the season. You talk about the yeah. addition of a guy like Al Jefferson, and obviously there were some exits from this team as well, not just Carlos Boozer, but think of some of the other players that left town and joined other clubs. And, you know, I, I know that's one of the points that Caldwell mentioned yesterday, and you're gonna hear that interview in our pregame show tonight where Jose said, you know what, there's, there's gotta be something about playing other teams early. We'd rather see a team you know, now in early November, maybe even late November, early December, as opposed to March or April when they've had four or five months together and they're on like a nice little run towards the postseason. Let's jump on teams early while they're trying to work their stuff out as well and see if we can maybe take advantage of them trying to get their chemistry in tune as well. And then that's something the Raptors have to take not only against the Jazz, but maybe against the Lakers and even against uh, Portland on Saturday night as well. It's getting loud behind us, folks. We're getting ready for the game here. So we're going to cut it. This will be up soon. We'll see you from L.A. tomorrow. All right, folks, have a good one, and we'll be back pre-game show tonight at 8.30 and then the tip-off just after 9.